a little guide to painting trees and um, it can help you in lots of ways uh, it can help you when you're producing landscapes um, where you've got a variety of trees it can help you if you're actually specifically studying trees um, and it can just help you generally with your painting because it's about tonal mixing and thinking about light tones medium tones and dark tones that's when I'm by tones I mean um, relationship of light to dark within within a color group um, so it's quite a nice little practice piece I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet so I've got here I've done little sketches of various different types of trees now the if you're doing a large group of trees, if you've got a forest area or you're looking at a landscape and there's a bunch of trees, the best way to make it seem plausible and interesting is to get different shapes into the trees. So this first shape here we've got is the shape of a, of a broadleafed an oak tree. Um, so oak trees have very big trees, but they have very solid central trunks and then their canopy um, comes very wide over the top, almost like an umbrella. So an oak tree will have this sort of a shape. So start, start off with your drawing and shape. I'm using a set of Winsor & Newton watercolours that are the sort of set that you get if you buy a set. I haven't used any fancy colours in here. And I'm just going to take a bit of sap green, brush that into the canopy just so that you can see it really so a bit of sap green into there so nice simple shape so you could start your sketch when you're going out into the wild sketching you could start them with these nice simple shapes I'm just picking up a bit of kitchen paper and we will again I'll use a little bit of bone umber the top's still wet, so I can pull it down a bit. That's quite nice. So the tree trunk. And we'll put a little bit of bone timber and sap green. Got the space, just a nice little bit of shading. So that is a stylized version of an oak tree. But when you're sketching, it's not a bad thing to start with. So secondly, well, let's look at the structure of the oak tree. So or you could think about it as a tree in winter. So for this... I'm going to, in winter, the sun is low in the sky. So skeletal things like the, the um, a bare leaf tree up against it will quite often look very dark, almost like a silhouette. So I'm going to mix up a dark colour. Those of you who come to my classes will know that I'm a massive fan of Payne's Grey, but I haven't got a Payne's Grey in this box because boxes don't generally come, a, bog, a, a standard small travel box like this won't come with it so i'm putting blue in here it's had a bit of green underneath it so i'm putting a bit of blue and i'm putting a little bit of alizar and crimson with it just so that i take it down off being and you can see it's quite purpley if i do a little you can see it's quite purpley so to that i'm going to add a bit of burnt umber put a bit of burnt umber in it'll take it down to a nice dark um and that's the colour that I'm going to use with it. I'm just going to make it a little bit stronger so that it's not too wishy-washy for you to see. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. That's a number nine brush or number eight. This is a number five. And I'm going to basically decide which side of my trunk is going to be the light. So I'm going to decide that my light is coming from there. So I'm going to start with this side. And I'm just going to take out this. This is a nice fine brush. It's, um, so I'm going to paint this in like that. There we go. Put some on it. So up in the top of the tree, it's going to be a little bit darker underneath the branches. I'm going to clean off the brush 
and just pull this down so that it pulls across to that side so we get that feeling of light and the same if you want to go for very fine leaves this is a rigger brush so a rigger brush is very long thin brush and you could be you can get these really nice let's have a little paint on that it's going to get those really long thin things so just do there we go and I'm bringing those back to the tree pulling a bit underneath so that you get Doesn't matter if it's not exactly matching colour wise. Put those in. So that's what your tree would look like underneath. You can see that that is basically still the shape of that canopy. Okay, nice practice for getting putting a little bit of tonal value in. So you're underneath of your branches, where your branches join together, they're gonna to be a little bit darker, yep. Yeah. And you can put, which is quite nice, just put some scruffy bits coming out of the tree. It's quite nice doing that. So that you get that feeling of the tree being in winter time. So there we go. Let's say in winter. Then, and again, with your grass down below, it's going, it's going to be silhouetted. So, put some little bits like that. You can go back in with your slightly bigger brush to get some. Whoops! Just splattered it all. Just a bit bigger. And there you go, so we've got a nice silhouette of a tree. Let's take that off. And so then now we're going moving on to this one, which is our, going to be our tree in summer. So our tree in summer, we still want to keep we still want to keep the light side of the tree um, because we've still got the sun on that side of the tree. So you can put an underlying coat of I've put lemon there. You could put um, this is yellow ochre going on the top if you don't fancy lemon and then as you come across to the other side of the tree again you just pop in start to pop in your browns put a little bit where they're coming underneath your tree and here I'm going to go back to my mix of blue and burnt umber to just get I'm putting it on it's still wet the previous paint is still wet you you can do it either way but if it's still wet then obviously um, it's going to run together nicely and so you're not going to get sort of and obviously as we go up into the canopy of the tree then we get darker So that's the base of our tree. So now for, for our leaves, I'm going to start again with the light colour. So we're going, we're going for different colours. Leave bits of white between. And my light is shining on this side of the tree. So yellow in first. There we go. And then I'm going to go for sap green on top of that, which you should have in your box. And I'm going to leave, I'm just dotting it in. I'm going to leave areas for white sunshine to be coming through. Um, 
and then I'm also paying attention to the underside of the leaves are going to be darker. So there we are, and then I'm going to take Again, I'm going to get back into my burnt umber and blue to put some really darks in, in areas in the tree. And another thing you can do is mix your green and add a red to it. Take it sort of darker green sort of turned it brown really but we add let's put some blue in there we go so you want to darken your green down with blue and red and then put in some more try not to get it too wet because otherwise it'll just all blur in together and then you've got nothing got no definition but you can see you can see from what I was saying about these tonal values that you need the light, the mid-tone and the dark. So have a go at doing a few trees. Still leaving the light. I think we need some more branches over here actually. And you can go back in afterwards and put, I think my trunk's gone a bit too, too light in comparison at the top. The thing with watercolour is you can always go darker, can't go lighter. So just give it a bit more. There you go. That's an oak tree. Um, I've got an elm tree and some conifer trees to do, but I'm going to leave that as that for now. Okay. Hope you enjoy. So the colours I've used, just to give you on the top, I've used sap green. I've used sap green mixed with a bit of alizarin in crimson and some blue to darken it. I've used burnt umber. Yellow ochre. And lemon yellow and the colour at the beginning that I made was alizarin crimson and French ultramarine blue so you will find all those colours or be able to mix all those colours from a basic box thank you <laughs>